If you would turn in your Bibles to James chapter 4. And as you're turning, don't forget pre-service prayer meeting tonight. Come early. Let's pray for a mighty movement of God's Spirit. God's been good to us in our services, but we just need a real definite moving of the Spirit to bring refreshment and to save folks. And, uh, and let's come early to pray. Service tonight, after service tonight, is signing uh, practice. So if you're in, in that group, signing practice after church tonight. And then prayer meeting, 10 o'clock Tuesday morning on uh, Wednesday is our family worship night here in the sanctuary. We're doing the series on Who Are We? And, you know, folks spend 12 years of their life being told that uh, we are the offspring of a monkey or some kind of one-cell thing that was in the muck. And uh, we can at least take some time on a Wednesday night to talk about who we are, truly are, in God. And then on, uh, did we get the youth rally worked out yet? Okay. Okay, we'll let you know more about that on on Wednesday evening. Amen. We're just going to read one verse, and if you would stand, we Pentecostals do that. We're up and down, up and down. That should be our physical worship and not our spiritual experience, I want to point out, though. James chapter 4, and you can keep your Bibles open. We'll be looking at a few more verses. We're talking about the promises of God, what God has declared He will do for His people. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He will flee from you. I want to preach this morning on the promise of the fleeing devil. I like the sound of that. The promise of the fleeing devil. You can have the promise. You don't have to be overrun by him. You can turn him around and he be the one that's doing the running. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, speak today. You know the need of every individual in this place. Make Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, make Jesus near and real to us, Lord, today. Lord, I pray that there would be a definite victory in somebody's battle this morning. I pray that somebody would find new strength to encounter the enemy and be an overcomer through Christ. Lord, move in this place. If there's one here that's lost, save them today. May we all leave differently, Lord, by the power of your word. Anoint your servant, Lord, this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. I could ask you the question, but I'll just go ahead and make it as a statement. In the United States, mountain lions are regarded as the number one human predator. Now, we're going to talk about mountain lions, and that's true in the animal kingdom, but I do want to put this asterisk to that. The number one human predator is not an animal, it's Satan. But let's talk about the animals. There's a naturalist who was doing research in the Arizona Blue Range Wilderness, Craig Childs, and he was coming downwind from a a watering hole there in the canyon, And he noticed as he got closer, there was a mountain lion drinking. And so he said, I better wait till that thing leaves. And so he waited and he watched the mountain lion get finished drinking and move off into some juniper trees and supposed that the mountain lion was gone. And so he made his way to the watering hole and he was getting ready to bend over. He was going to measure the tracks and record it. He was getting ready to bend over, but he looked around one last time. And in the juniper trees, 30 feet away, he saw that thing looking at him staring at him now if you've not been in those situations you don't know how frightening that can be but when that happens childs he pulls his knife and without breaking his gaze on that animal begin to stare it right in the eyes he knows being a naturalist he knows what he should do and what he shouldn't do in those situations in fact i'm going to let you i'm going to let him tell his story He said, mountain lions are known to take down animals six, seven, and eight times their size. Here's their method. They attack, hear me, they attack from behind. 
They attack from behind. They clamp onto the spine at the base of the prey skull and snap the spine. The top few vertebrae are the target, housing the respiratory and motor skills that cease instantly, instantly when the cord is cut. Mountain lions have stalked people for miles. One woman survived an attack, an initial attack, and escaped by foot, foot down a road. But the lion shortcutted the road several miles further and killed her from behind. And so he said, in this situation, I hold firm to my ground. I'm already preaching. I hold firm to my ground. And I do not even intimate that I will back off. If I run, it's certain I will have a mountain lion all over me if I give it my back. I will only briefly feel its weight on me against the ground. The canine teeth will open my vertebrae without breaking a single bone. The mountain lion begins to move to my left. And so I turn and face him keeping my face on it and my knife in my right hand. It paces to my right, trying to get around on my other side to get behind me. And I turn, staring at it. My stare is about the only defense that I have. That went on for several moments. And finally, the mountain lion has got as close as 10 feet. But finally, the mountain lion turned around and left him. I'm already preaching. I'm talking about another lion, a roaring lion. I'm talking about Satan. But I believe as believers, if we're facing the attack of Satan, we ought to be like this naturalist. I hold firm to my ground, and I don't even consider that I will back off. If I run, it's certain he's going to get me. And just like the mountain lion attacks the motor skills, the thinking, the brain, he meant Satan attacks our mind. But I believe we ought to be like the naturalist and stay hand with the sword of the spirit in our hand and say I'm not backing down I'm not giving up I'm not giving out I'm not being intimidated I'm not running I'm going to stand and face you until you back down I'm not the one backing down this time you are hallelujah you know it's one thing to watch as Satan destroys people and destroys their marriages And watch as Satan destroys churches. But it's another thing to watch the person that Satan is destroying. Watch that person make no effort to stand and to fight against him. That person just lets Satan do what he wants to do and destroy. It does not have to be that way. We have a promise. Resist the devil and he will flee I want to ask a question this morning hear me across the building who's running here is it you or is it Satan it ought not to be you that's running it ought to be Satan and if you are running it's time to turn around dig in your heels and say enough is enough I ain't running no more because I got the promise of a fleeing devil. Hallelujah. Why must the devil be resisted? Amen. First of all, because of his efforts. The underlying promise here, or underline the promise here, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Underline that promise is the reality that Satan will come against you. He is going to do it. He is involved in an effort. He's got to be resisted because he's coming against us. I want to tell you this morning, the same goes for me, but if you do not resist him, he will overrun. He will move in. He will take control. He will rule. He will wreck. He will destroy your life, your inner life, your peace of mind, your family life, your spiritual life. Another apostle, Peter, tells us, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Hallelujah. I want to ask you this morning, Are you aware of Satan coming against you? How can you tell? It might be he's attacking your sense of self-worth. He's telling you you're nothing. You'll never be anything. You don't mean anything to anybody. 
How do you know he's coming against you? He may be trying to convince you. Your salvation isn't real. Your experience isn't real. God's not real. And trying to serve God, you're not really real. How do you know he's coming against you? He may be convincing you that your situation is truly hopeless. That there's no way out. Things are always going to be this way with you. Amen. He may be showing you every reason to be discouraged and depressed. He may be talking to you this morning about giving up, throwing in the towel, going back to the world. He may be tempting you in your very area of weakness. Amen. I'm just telling you. Amen. We got to resist him because he is coming against us. You say, well, I, I'm not aware of Satan coming against me. Then you need to take stock. You need to evaluate because if Satan's not resisting you, it's probably because you're already going his way. Amen. His efforts. Satan has schemes to destroy every one of us. And in this respect, Satan's like God. Satan is no respect of persons. He doesn't care if you're a child, a teenager, a married person, a single He doesn't care if you're middle-aged or elderly. He doesn't care if you've served God for five minutes or 50 years. Satan is no respect a person. You're going to hear me keep coming back to this in the message this morning. But it's an awful thing to watch Satan come against folks and they simply do not resist him. They don't seem to even be aware that they're in the battle that they're in. I have watched as an unsaved, listen to me young people, unsaved, a worldly Christian, but a professed Christian comes into a young person's life and they enter, that young person's entered into relationship with no qualms. They don't even seem to realize. It doesn't seem to matter that they're not saved. It doesn't seem to matter that they're worldly. They just say, here's a relationship, and they enter into it. I want to ask you this morning, are you dating someone that will lead you away from Christ? I've watched parents allow their children to get involved in activities that keep them from church and church activities, and there seems to be no concern. I'd like to ask parents this morning, are you allowing your child to do the things today that will one day cause them not to serve the Lord Jesus. I've watched as folks involve themselves in worldly pursuits that sap their affection for spiritual things and they don't even seem to realize the spiritual life is draining right out of them. I ask you today are you developing an addiction? Are you going to websites you shouldn't go to? Are you pursuing a hobby that leaves your soul incapable a loving God are you watching things are you listening to music that is taking the work of God out of your heart amen I've watched as a person forms a relationship with someone that's unsaved or unspiritual amen I call these folks corruptors and I watch as this corruptor turns their thinking turns their attitude of serving God and I ask the question are you associating with those that are influencing you away from from God and to the world if any of those things are true you need to be aware that behind it all it's the enemy of your soul amen take note of what's happening shake yourself and say hey wait a minute I know who's behind this and I refuse to let it happen hallelujah we must resist him because of his efforts we must resist him because of who he is It says resist the devil. The very word devil means the one who exposes another to shame or blame by means of misrepresentation. That's what a devil does. He wants to expose things in your life to all the world that will bring blame and shame to you. And he does it through deception. Amen. We're commonly uh, used to of thinking the devil as the slanderer. That's what his name literally means. But to put it just simply, the devil is the one who accuses. Listen to me all across the building here. Amen. If you're not listening, I, I'm preaching this morning because I know what the devil's trying to do in people's hearts and lives. And he is an accuser. Let me just briefly tell you how he accuses. 
accuse us. The devil will accuse God to you. The devil will tell you God doesn't love you. God doesn't care for you. God's doing you wrong. God's not working in your life. He'll accuse God to you. The devil will accuse you to others. He'll tell others that person doesn't like you. That person isn't any good. That person will never live for God. He's an accuser. He'll accuse you to you. He'll get you to talking. Amen. Talking to you about you. See, I told you you was no good. Look, there you went and did it again. You don't love God. You're never going to make it. You can, he accuses you to you. Satan will accuse others to you. They don't like you. They're a clique. They don't want to have anything to do with you. They're not friendly to you. He accuses others to you. He'll even accuse you to God. Go ask Job. Amen. And Satan said to God, he only serves you for the material blessings of I'm talking about the accuser. Amen. And he will accuse. He will also accuse in every way possible. But we need to realize who he is. He is the accuser. He is the liar and the father of every lie. Don't listen to his accusation. Resist him. He ain't telling you the truth. I said he's not telling you the truth. I remember my dad telling me a story when I call, called to preach. I don't know if this is a true story, but it is one that brought, I've thought a lot through my ministry, and my dad told me a lot of things, and this helped me, but, you know, sometimes young preachers, they get visions of grandeur. They're going to be in the spotlight. Their name's going to be in the, I hadn't got there yet. I don't know if I ever did, but he told me the story anyway. He said one time there was a young man, young preacher, married, but he wanted power, not for the right reasons. He wanted power so he could be known as a faith healer. And people would come to his meetings, and he'd have great crowds. Power, that's all he thought about, power with God. One night, he and his wife were lying in bed, and an angel of light appeared at the foot of the bed and said, do you want power? He said, oh, yes, I want power. And this angel said, well, go to a certain, certain road intersection, and I'll give you power. The man got up and started getting dressed. And his wife said, you're not going to go, are you? And the man said, well, sure, I've been praying for power. I want power. She said, oh, don't go. He said, why not? She said, he said, why not? Didn't you see that that was an angel of light? She said, yes, it was. But did you notice his feet? And the man said, no, I didn't notice his feet. She said, they were goat's feet. Don't go. He said, no, it was an angel of light. And he went and stood on that street corner. And demons literally possessed him. He got power, but the wrong kind. I'm going to tell you, we have been warned that he does at t times come as an angel of light to deceive. And I don't have time to get into the teaching of this this morning. But if it goes against this word one little bit, if it goes against the wisdom of your leaders one little bit, all I'm trying to say is we're preaching about looking under the shining robe at the base and seeing that he may come as an angel, but he's got goat's feet. If Satan's coming against you today and it seems so appealing, so attractive, amen, I beg you, look at his feet. I know not literally. I'm not saying literally. I'm talking about looking at the situation. Look at his feet and you'll discover that underneath all that light is goat's feet. Amen. He is a deceiver. Amen. I've seen folks from the outside. You can see so clearly that the devil's at work in their life but the one being attacked doesn't seem to notice, doesn't seem to care, and denies that it's taken place. I've said to so many through the years, I can tell you what's going to happen if you go that route. I can tell you what's going to happen if you make that decision. I can write the script. I've seen Satan do it over and over again, and the reason he keeps doing it is because believers keep falling for it. Amen. We need to be like Paul said. We're not ignorant of his divine. I don't care how good it sounds. Amen. It's time to recognize what's happening. He's trying to ruin and destroy and kill and wreck. Amen. Turn away from him and destroy him and turn to the one who said, I am come to give you life and give it more abundant. Oh, hallelujah. We need to resist him not just because of his efforts and because of who he is, but because of his allies. 
I'm going to read just a few verses here from James. James 1. James asks a question. What are these wars and fightings among you? You could take that as fights in the church, fights in the marriage, fights between parents and kids, fights at school. Where do these fightings come from? He answers this question. Even of your lust, that war in your members. Verse 2. Ye lust and have not, you kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you have not, because you ask not. Did you know if there's a lot of conflict in your life, both in your external world and in your internal world. James says the thing that's stirring that up is your lust. See, Satan has an ally in our lust. He, James said all that turmoil. What is lust? Well, one simple way for today to look at it. Lust is desire for what you should not and cannot have. That's what lust is. You know you shouldn't have it. You know you can't even have it and be a believer and be a Christian, but you keep desiring it. And, and James says because of that, no wonder your mind's in turmoil. No wonder there's turmoil in your marriage, in your home. No wonder you can't get along with anybody because your lust got you all stirred up. Hallelujah. How many knows pastors preaching the truth this morning? I know it because I just read it from the apostle. James goes on. Look at the last part of verse 2. He said, yet yeah, you have not because you have ask not. How do you know it's lust? It's lust if what you desire, you can't truthfully ask God for it. Think about that. Hear me across the mouth. It's lust if the thing you desire is not something you can sincerely and humbly and with faith ask God for. That's lust. That's what James says. Not me. Amen. Why do you have lust? He goes on. He tells us why we have lust. Look at verse 4. You adulterers and adulteresses. That's why I've said many times, wouldn't you like to have James for revival? Church, we're glad to have our evangelist. We're glad to have evangelist James here with us tonight. He's going to be preaching. And he comes open his Bible and he looks at him. You adulterers and adulteresses. Well, that'd be a good way to start revival. No, you're not. You say, I'm not an adulteress. Know you not? Listen, all over the building. Listen, know you not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. I want to tell you, you know why folks have lust? Because they've been cheating on God. Hear me across the building. If you are a believer and your lusts are all stirred up, you've been cheating on God. You haven't been faithful to God. You've turned your attention, your affection, your desires another direction other than God. James said you've got the world on your mind instead of God. Amen. That's when folks begin to lust. They've been cheating on God. I don't think in the time we live in it's a time to cheat on God. Amen. I think it's time to be more faithful to Him than we've ever been. Amen. You see why? I'll tell you why. Because he is a bridegroom and the bridegroom's coming for his bride and he's not coming after a bride that's committing adultery, being unfaithful to him, flirting and taking part in this world. He's coming after a bride that is pure and clean and faithful. Hallelujah. Serving him with all their heart and life and mind. Hallelujah. You see, when our lusts are drawn out and incited and inflamed by this world, we need to know Satan's behind it all. He designed this world to inflame our lust and bring us to destruction. Secondly today, how is he to be resisted? Now this is when I get really deep, so get your pens out. How do you resist Satan? By resisting him. I'll let that sink in just a minute here. I mean, you can't fight him without fighting him. You can't say no without saying no. You can't resist him without resisting him. And here's the point. You can't resist him unless you're the one that does it. Nobody else can resist him for you. What does the word resist mean? It means to stand up against stand up against amen Wesley you're going to help me today come ahead
I was just at the doctor this week with somebody else. And the doctor was doing a little test. Just stand up here and face this beautiful crowd, this crowd of beautiful people. See how loving they look. He said, I'm going to do a test here. Put your arm up. And he said, now I'm going to push down against your arm. And here's what he said, but resist me. Okay, good. He said, now I'm going to pull on this. I'm trying to pull this arm up. You resist me. Is it evident to everyone he's resisting? By the way, it's evident when a believer is resisting Satan or not. Now, first of all, I'm going to do some things, but I want you to resist me, okay? I'm going to try to get you over here. I don't like where you're at in God. I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to get you over I mean, you're facing the cross. I don't like I want to get your attention on the world. Resist. I'm pretty stout. I, I'm just going to push you down. I'm going to get you down as far as I can get. He resisted. Now, I'm going to tell you, don't resist me, okay? I don't like where you're at in God. I want you over here. That's a lot of believers. I don't like you looking at the cross and looking at that. I want your attention on the world. I don't like you joyful in the Lord. I want to push you down. Thank you. He did good, didn't he? What kind of Christian are you going to be? What kind of young person are you going to be? Resist! Thank you. Resist him. Resist him. Pray. Read your Bible. Be faithful to the fellowship of the saints. Fast at times. Whatever God lays on your heart. But don't let Satan have his own way. Amen. He will not give up and leave on his own. You make him leave. Brother Wilson, you've served God many years. I'm going to ask you a question. You tell these people. Am I preaching the truth? Amen. Amen. He won't leave on his own. You've got to make him leave. The lack of resistance only encourages him. It only encourages him. I've heard this on several occasions. I've never been able to understand it. But a wife lets her husband's girlfriend move in with them to try to save the marriage. Huh? And you might as well be in that situation. You are. If you say, I can serve God and keep giving in to Satan at the same time. It ain't going to happen. Don't open the door and let him in your house and then try to resist him. Meet him at the door and bar the door. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Resist him. Never will this not work because it's the promise of God. There's some situations and you hear the expression, resistance is futile. But I'm telling you, that's a lie of Satan himself. Resistance is not futile. I don't care how big and powerful he is. We have the promise of God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You don't have to give in. You don't have to be ruined. How do you know it's Satan to resist? A few more questions. We'll be done in a minute. Would this thing move you backwards? Would this thing overcome you and take control of you? Would this destroy your spiritual life, your peace of mind, your family, your church? Would this tempt you to go against God's Word? Will this seduce you? Will this take away what God has given to you? Will this push you down? You see, it's one thing just to be passive and not resist the devil. And it's another thing not even to want to or to try to. Amen. We must try and we must resist him. Amen. If we fail to resist, we say yes to Satan. You know how you you can know you're saying yes to Satan? If you're agreeing with him. He says that's good. You say, I agree with you. That's good. That's what you want, he says, and you say, I agree with you. That's what I want. You're saying yes to Satan. When you agree with him, he might come to you this morning and say, you're nothing. You'll never make it. You say, yes, that's right. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. I'm worthless. You've just agreed with Satan. Amen. You're a failure. Yes, Satan, you're right. I'm a failure. You won't ever overcome that temptation. Yes, Satan, you're right. I'll never. I'm telling you, it's time to quit agreeing with the devil and start disagreeing with him and resist him. When I got preached, now this still happens. Thoughts bother my mind. When I first got 
preach, you know, all kinds of thoughts would bother me in the middle of preaching. I mean, Satan would come against me. I mean, he'd say, you know, you're doing, you're not doing anybody any good, or you're saying that wrong, or this is happening. He just, and I got in the habit of, when it, when the pressure got too big from the enemy, I'd just move the microphone and I'd say, "Get out of here, leave me alone." Wisdom of youth, you know. Well, one time I was preaching along, he got to bother me, and I forgot to move the microphone. I said right in the middle of the preaching, God so loved the world, and he gave his own, Devil, get out of here and leave me alone. And six people left. <laughs> I mean, we got to resist him. we got to say, no, quit agreeing with him. He flees because when we resist him, we have God and all of heaven backing us up. I'll be back. I said he flees when we resist him. Because when we resist him, we have God and all of heaven backing us up. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And then how do we resist him? By submitting to God. This is so important. How many knows all these promises have had this condition to them? Before he said he'll flee from you, he says, look at verse 7, submit yourselves there to, for to God. Submit means to arrange under, literally. The Greek word means to arrange under, to subordinate, to put yourself underneath. Now, for those of you that work with computers and some of the publishing programs, you have this thing called order. You're working with pictures and text. You can click on there on order and say move backwards or move forwards. How many knows what I'm talking about? Or sometimes other lists, it'll say, you click on it, it'll say move up to the top of the list or move down. I'll tell you what we do when we submit. Amen. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful. But when we submit to God, we click on God in our life and we move Him to the front. We move Him to the top of the list. We live under the banner, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. If God is just an add-on to our lives, we'll never defeat Satan. But if he is truly Lord of our lives, when we say no, the devil's going to run because God is behind us. He will only flee if Jesus is the Lord of my life. The promise of the devil's fleeing is if we resist him but resisting him is contingent upon submitting to God and I want to tell you this morning you can't do one without the other you can't submit to God unless you're resisting the devil and you cannot resist the devil unless you're submitting to God you cannot do one without the other I have found a sad thing in that it is some people they don't submit to God and resist the devil but some folks resist God and submit to the devil they're in really bad shape you need to know which is which and I beseech you this morning submit to God and resist the devil Wesley will you help me again Zach you want to help me you say I don't know what you're going to do when I get up here I don't know either you want to help me again Wesley thank you hallelujah hallelujah you want to be God or Satan? He's going to be God. You know what that leaves? You can't say yes to both at the same time. How many know some folks trying to do that? I want to tell you. Now, you guys are going to have to help me out. Of that. I want to tell you how this works. I want to, I want you, here's how this works. You're God, right? I want to get this straight. And you're Satan. Submit to God. Now, I'm going to say yes to God, and I'm going to ask him what he hears when I say yes to God. You're speaking to me, and I say, yes, God. When I just said yes to God, what did you hear? No. I just said no to the devil. But by the same token, I say to God, God's dealing with me, speaking to me, drawing me. No, God. What did you hear, Satan? Yes. It works the other way. Satan's coming against me. And I say, yes, okay, let's do that. Yes, but God heard. Loud. I was whispering so they wouldn't hear. 
It's confusing. I know. I confused you. No. Louder. No. No. Louder. No. Louder. No. That's what God hears. I might have just said yes to Satan, but God. No. See? Yes, Satan. Let's. Yes. And God heard. No. But Satan's coming against me, and I'm tired of it. I'm through with it. I want to live for God. I want to serve Him. So I say to Satan, I say, No, Satan. But God hears. Yes. No. Yes. Every time I say no to Satan, I'm saying. Yes. To God. Thank you, young man. You say you drew that out. Some folks need to get a hold of it. Because every time, you need to know, every time you've been saying yes to Satan, you've been screaming no at God. But this morning, if you'll look at Satan and say no to him, you've just screamed yes to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Well, we've got to quit. Amen. Last of all, what will happen if we resist the devil? I've already told you the promise is resist the devil and he will flee from you. I want to tell you a little secret. Satan can look so ferocious when he's facing you, but he's not near as big when he's running away. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Years ago in the Osho, a preacher came through and taught us this song. We've got the devil on the run now. We've got the devil on the run. He can't stay when I pray, seeing what the Lord has done. There's healing for the body and saving for the soul and joy for those that have done. Without a doubt, we've got a right to shout because we got the devil on the run. How many believes the promise of the fleeing devil? Would you come music? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now I want to tell you, I hate to ruin it for you. I hate to ruin it for you. I'm going to tell you the truth. I try to always tell you the truth. You can resist him and he flee from you today, but he will be back. Jesus resisted him in the 40 days of temptation and overcame him. But the scripture said Satan departed for a season. Now I don't want that to bother you. Because when he comes back, just resist him again. And by the way, we shouldn't have to be resisting over the same thing over and over. Maybe we left a little doubt in his mind where we stood on that thing. Amen. When I got to thinking about this, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. I've told before, but just in brief... When I was in about the ninth or 10th grade at trade school, I'd been in the restroom when some guys were selling some drugs and somebody told on them, they thought it was me. And they made my life miserable. They caught me in the break room once and threw burning cigarettes on my shirt and punched me in the face and this and that. But one of them, he was a lot bigger and he didn't let it go with that. Whenever he found me, he'd look for me. He'd find me in the halls of school and he'd come up and push me and try to trip me and just make my life a torment and I, I would you know I'd look for him down the hall for I go down the hall and I when I left the school I'd make sure he wasn't there if he was I'd go out in a different exit just made li- I don't know how long it, it seemed like week after week my life was miserable and one day I was walking down the hall and I heard him holler my name behind me and recognized his voice and I said enough is enough and he came up and he grabbed me on my shoulder and when he did I turned around and I was swinging as I turned with everything I had and I hid him he had a pretty big nose to start with it wasn't hard to miss but I came around swinging and got him right in the nose knocked him down it was bleeding one punch fight but I want to tell you something he never ever bugged me or picked on me again quit running from Satan turn around and resist him You might find it's a one-punch fight because all of heaven and God is with you. Would you stand? I had more, but I'm just going to quit. I want to ask you this morning, are you currently under an attack of Satan? Listen to me. I'm giving an altar call. Are you currently under the attack of Satan? Has he been coming against you? I want to ask you just be you don't answer out loud but answer in your heart listen to me cross me you personally only you can answer this question is there something you desperately need to resist this morning think about that 
Has Satan been making inroads into your life and you've just been letting him do it? Is Satan destroying you, your marriage, your peace of mind? I want to tell you the promise of the fleeing devil. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. I've never given this kind of altar call, but I have found when folks get really honest and specific with God, God is able to move in their life. We're going to pray. And when we finish praying together, I want you to be real honest. And if you can be honest and say, there's something in my life, something been coming against me, Satan's been coming against me in some way. There's something in my life I need to firmly plant my feet and resist. If that's you, if there's something in your life you need to resist, After we've prayed, I'm going to ask you to come. And I want you to come and fill these altars and say, God, I'm here at this altar to submit to you. And in submitting to you, I'm going to resist the devil. God, I'm here at the altar to say yes to you. And saying yes to you, I'll be saying no to that thing that's coming. I want us to pray together. Let's join our heart. Let's pray for an eternal moment. We need an eternal moment. Let's pray. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would move in our hearts and lives and minds. Lord, that we wouldn't see one more life destroyed. One more home destroyed. One more person ruined. One more person in monk down and destroyed by the things of this world. Lord, I pray that there be faith in someone's heart that in saying yes to you this morning, hey, they're saying no to the enemy of their soul and they can leave here singing, there's victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Lord, help people, Lord, this morning to be honest and open with you that you can help them and stand behind them and strengthen them. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to begin to come across the building. Everybody still pray. You begin to come this morning. You just say there's something in my life I need to resist. Temptation, discouragement, doubt, whatever it is. Amen. I might not even come close to naming it. Come say yes to God. Come say yes to God. You'll be saying no to that old enemy. There's something in my life I need to resist. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of giving in. I'm tired of being defeated. Amen. I'm coming to resist the enemy of my soul. Hallelujah. Come and resist. Don't listen to him. You've listened to him long enough. Amen. Amen. Say no. Say no to Satan. You'll say yes to God. Amen. Amen. Still lots of room. Hallelujah. Feel these altars. Hallelujah. Don't let him win. Don't let him win. Don't quit fighting. Don't quit resisting. Amen. Stand. Having done all, stand. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Seek Him while you're here. Seek Him in these altars this morning. No seek Him in these altars. Oh, against me. When you're through praying, pray with somebody else this morning. Resist Him together. It won't work, and no weapon formed against me shall Amen. prosper. I want you that are seeking God, say no to the devil. It won't him. work, say no to and him. no weapon say yes to God. formed oh. against me shall prosper. It won't work, oh. and no Hallelujah. weapon formed Hallelujah. against me. Hallelujah shall prosper it won't work come on let's seek him God you don't have to be do defeated you don't have to be defeated amen maybe just holler out to God right in the altar yes God I will serve he you will yes God I'll go oh, all the way God will do yes what God he said I'll say no to the enemy do. Yes, God. He will stand I'll by stand his word, him. and he will come through. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work, and no weapon formed. 
formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. And God will do what he said he would do. He's not a man that he should lie, but he will come through. And God will do what he said he would do. He will stand by his Some word. Some young person right now just and needs he to say no to come through. It's He'll not open for negotiation. He said he would do. It's a final, unqualified, a unconditioned he should lie. no. Hallelujah. He will right come now, this through. altar. Tell God Satan, will it's an unqualified no. Without do. reservation, I tell he you no. Will stand because by I've his said word. yes to God. He will come through. I've said yes to God. Don't be afraid of the arrows by day from the hand of my enemy. I can stand Ask yourself, where did that come ground. from? With the Lord was that by God or was that the enemy of my soul? For the snares they have set will not succeed. 